So I thank you, everybody for organizing this masterclass. It's very interesting to see uh, different sides uh, to do the same thing. So it's really interesting. So my approach uh, is the Ritz Spring approach. Uh, and uh, this is the anatomical view before opening uh, uh, the peritoneum. So you have just in front of you the bladder, the seminal vesicles going upwards and the prostate in front of you. And uh, the first steps of our approach is uh, to perform uh, the posterior, to isolate the seminal vesicles, to charge them onto suprapubic stitches, and then to develop the posterolateral plan and to perform the nerve sparing approach, nerve sparing or nerve rejecting approach. After that, uh, we pull down the seminal vesicles uh, and uh, expose the posterior surface of the trigon and of the bladder neck. And that's the starting point of our, of our video collection. And what I want to show is uh, some anatomical landmark that we have to keep in mind. And uh, probably we will not use them, but still we have to know where they are. Uh, we in the posterior view, what we see is that we have the ureteral orifices that are quite high uh, uh, compared to what we think that they are, and I will show you better with the videos. If we have a median lobe, it's the first time, uh, the first thing that we can meet uh, during uh, our dissection, and uh, if we have a sagittal view, we will have to remember the posterior surfaces. I don't know if you see my arrow, uh, but still yeah. you, you have to find the posterior structures and then the anterior structures, that is the, the tutorial apron and uh, a quite a little bit uh, uh, caudally, we have the DVC. So depending on the oncological and anatomical situation, we can choose to uh, reject or spare the posterior part of the, of the bladder neck or the anterior part of, of the bladder neck, especially in anterior diseases. Okay, starting with the video, the first anatomical landmark that uh, I think is important to understand is the retrotrigonal layer that is exactly this layer, that is what you were showing us, that is the tissue exactly here that you grab from anterior when you do the posterior reconstruction of uh, the rocco stitch. Okay, if you understand this is bladder, this is seminal vesicles, but this will be the layer that we will grab with the needle, with the stitch, when we will do the rocco stitch from anteriorly. And uh, prosecuting, so this is a video of a Da Vinci view, but still I want to show a normal bladder neck, not with Da Vinci, Sorry, okay, but with the but uh, with the Medtronic uh, view, uh, this was the very first case that we performed, uh, and uh, still it was a quite uh, quick and normal bladder neck. So we have the retrotrigonal layer, and uh, you will see that uh, some small vessels are bleeding, and they are quite usual to be seen on this uh, on this uh, view. The trick is always to surround the bladder neck following the shape of the prostate. And uh, you see that also when we perform a formal sparing of the bladder neck, I still try to leave some fibers, some muscle fibers attached to the prostate. And I think that this is the safe side to avoid the positive margin, still uh, sparing the bladder neck. And you can see that uh, going a little bit uh, from lateral to medial, you always find a V-shaped bladder neck. You see that we have uh, fibers here, fibers here attached to the prostate, and we have a V-shaped uh, view of the bladder neck. Here, I'm just uh, starting to insert the mucosa, and the mucosa still is bleeding also from posterior bleed, not only from anterior bleed, as you showed, Carlo. And you can see the, the catheter and uh, continuing to surround the bladder neck, we will go on the anterior part of the bladder neck. This is the time to remove the catheter. And still we go on the interior part of the bladder neck uh, that is the place where we have to choose uh, 
to spare or not the VDC. Fractions are really, really important uh, in these situations. I can understand that it's uh, quite difficult to, 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 to tell if this is a Da Vinci view or a Medtronic view. It's not a difference. From the surgical point of view, it's exactly the same. I want to, to show I want to show you some uh, different situation. After, what happens after PPH surgery? So PRP or polyp or adenomectomy or simple prostatectomy. Again, uh, we follow exactly um, the same steps. We have the retrotrigonal layer, the posterolateral part of the prostate uh, that has already been uh, isolated. And uh, here, we have a little bit scary tissue. It's um, a different tissue. We don't have the fibers exactly as we saw before. But still, I perfectly agree with what you were telling before that you have to alternate uh, sharp and gland dissection. Because if you go all the time, Ben was talking about it, uh, if you go all the time with the energy, I think that. Um, risk to change your plan and to find uh, bad surprises and to go inside the prostate or inside the bladder. But still going around, you can see that is a sticky tissue. So you need more energy, but still you, need, you saw that the blunt dissection opened our mucosa because it's the scar of the TRP and uh, uh, most endoscopists, uh, most of the, of the endoscopists uh, um, Reject more on the bladder neck than in the apex. Deflating the blood, the balloon allows us to see where exactly where we are. We have the posterior shape of the prostate, and we are in a good plan because we have the bladder neck here. And then going from outside to inside is the trick to avoid going inside the prostate here never from inside, but always from outside. And following the shape of the prostate allows us to understand exactly our plans. I know that it's not a usual view for you, but, uh, but when you see 20, 100, 1000 procedures, you will see always the same plans. And here we are on the anterior part of the bladder neck. And this, this is the final view of the bladder neck dissected after TRP vision. Okay. What happens if you have a median lobe? Always lateral to medial, because if you have your median lobe and you go exactly from the posterior view, you risk to cut it or to go inside the, the median lobe. Here, your landmarks are the orientation of the fibers of the bladder neck. You see that this is muscle, and still we have to dissect and going from lateral to medial. You see here that we have the shape of the prostate, and I'm following the shape of the prostate incising the vertical fibers of the bladder neck. Sorry, I just made a mistake on the view. Okay. The median lobe, and luckily we have uh, uh, the MRI that uh, higher that makes our attention higher on that. But still, you see that the vertical fibers. If you follow the vertical fibers, you will find the, the exact plane that you have to cut. And the traction is a really, really an important thing to do, just to improve your opening and your gland section. From lateral to medial, you go shaping uh, the median lobe, incising the fibers and traction downwards to extract the median lobe from inside the prostate. As it happens in the anterior spaces, it's not for beginners, but still you can understand uh, the steps. Here it is the mucosa that shows us the end of the median lobe. And now the median lobe will come out of the prostate, come out of the bladder, sorry. And still we go 
surrounding our bladder neck exactly as we did before. Obviously, the anterior part of the patient with the, with the median lobe or the anterior median lobe follow the same rules. Okay. Last scenario, and that's uh, what uh, always people ask us about uh, ureteral orifices. I think that uh, ureteral orifices are really far away in the posterior dissection. And, uh, but in extreme demolition, where you have the infiltration of the bladder neck and you know that, they, that you have it uh, from, from a well done MRI, you will see that uh, you follow exactly the same plans, uh, but still follow with the fibers. Here it is a very, very good case, uh, a, a T4, a CT4 prostate cancer of a young patient that was uh, uh, advised about the possibility of ureteral transplantation, but still uh, ureters uh, look at not to be infiltrated. Here inside, you can see that this is cancer. And uh, I still don't know in this place where ureteral orifices are, but still I know that uh, my traction allows me to understand uh, where the muscle ends up and where the prostate uh, begins. You can see that this is the anterior, it's, it's a partial cystectomy. I mean, you understand that this is all the bladder neck infiltrated. You might say, why should you go rate sparing? And the answer is that also in these cases, you have an improvement of, uh, of urinary contents. So after you finish your demolition, okay, we go and look for ureteral orifices. And still you can see, this is the ureter on the left side, and you can see some, some ureteral jet. You see it? Okay, and in the end, in this case, as it was very close to the, to the anastomosis, on the right side, it was not the closer, we didn't see it. Okay, it was still cranial to our section. We put a ureteral stand. And uh, you see a small ureteral jet here, and positioning the stent is not that difficult. If you cannot position the stent, it means that the ureter is far. That's what we understood after three, three thousand, almost three thousand weeks. So in conclusion, also in rates sparing uh, approaches, the bladder neck can be spared or dissected according to oncological or technical needs. The ureteral orifices are far away from the surgical field, but uh, you may need uh, in extreme cases to, to stand them and you can do it. The anterior structure can be managed according to the patient the disease. Thank you. Oh, thank now, you, Anton. That was really... Oh, take it easy. That was really interesting, um, really impressive, especially the last one. Uh, I have a question for you, yeah. and actually two. One is uh, um, I saw you um, deflated the, the the balloon at a second stage. Uh, is that something you do every time, or uh, was just no, a no, we deflated the balloon, not inflated? Deflated, yes. So you dissect the bladder neck with the balloon inflated. Inflated, but, but not tractioned. Yeah, ah, okay. still inside. Okay, just to be and... sure that, uh, that someone just uh, going around in the OR does not remove the catheter. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. 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 Yes. And the second so the one is... is a problem because if it's tractioned against the bladder neck, you will have a bad dissection of the bladder neck and ah, yeah, you sure. ruin your work. 
Sure. Ah, okay. And the uh, second question is, um, are the real uh, beginning of your dissection, um, do you have some techniques to identify the right plane where you to get through? Because I saw basically you have the seminal vesicles that tells you uh, where to go. Is yeah. that the plane you follow? Is that the reference you have in, in your view to follow or you do something else? The most important thing that you have to do is to, is to remember to dissect the retrotrigonal layer. Because if you don't dissect the layer, that superficial layer, you will never have a good vision of the bladder fibers. This mm -hmm. is the first step. Okay. A second step is not to start in front of you, but always to start from the posterior lateral face of the prostate uh, and uh, to follow the shape that you already dissected in the posterior aspect of your dissection. And still mm -hmm. going from lateral to medial, you will have uh, the shape of the bladder neck and uh, it's quite a similar view and, and the similar principle more than view that you have from the posterior lateral approach. Yes, okay, if you okay. go from lateral to medial, you will have uh, a you can respect the, the structures that you want to, to respect. 